Hi there. My name is Laura. In this video we will talk about how to validate and monitor security controls in an organization. It is important to review controls to ensure their effective implementation and identify any need for control adjustment, replacement, or removal based on changes in the risk environment. Control validation and control monitoring form critical aspects of control framework within the organization. Control validation is a process of verifying and validating the effectiveness of controls to ensure that they are functioning as intended and providing the necessary level of protection against risks. It involves evaluating the design and implementation of controls as well as testing them to assess their effectiveness. The goal of control validation is to provide assurance that controls are working as intended, identify any control deficiencies, and make necessary improvements to strengthen the control environment. The system's development process should ensure that security controls are built into the system and tested prior to deployment. Testing is the final opportunity to prevent a failure related to a poorly written program or improperly designed application. The objective of testing is to uncover any flaws or risk that may be hidden in the functionality or design of the application or system. This is important because risk response for a problem found early is often less expensive and more effective than for a problem found later. There are different testing techniques that can be used to reveal issues in system development. Let's understand these techniques one by one. Unit testing involves testing of each individual component or piece of a system. This is the most basic level of test and is the best way to find a problem within the piece of code or piece of equipment being tested. There are two types of unit testing. In white box testing, the tester has full access and visibility to the code, application, or a product. In black box testing, the tester has no knowledge of internal workings of the system. Black box testing is typically carried out on a device or executable purchased from a vendor. Integration testing examines how the various components of a system function when integrated or combined with each other. It assesses the overall performance and behavior of the system as a whole. The aim of integration testing is to identify any issues or defects that arise from the interactions between the components. It ensures that the system works smoothly and is expected in a real-world setting. Regression testing involves evaluating modifications made to a program, with the purpose of identifying any potential issues that may have emerged in its operation as a result of the changes. Fuzzing or mutation testing involves sending random, unexpected, or invalid data inputs to a software system or application, with the aim of discovering vulnerabilities, defects, or crashes in its operation. Recovery testing checks the system's ability to recover after a software or hardware failure. Security testing verifies that the modified or new system includes provisions for appropriate access controls and does not introduce any security holes that may compromise other systems. Volume testing focuses on evaluating the ability of a software system or application to handle large amounts of data or transactions. The main objective of volume testing is to determine the system's scalability and performance under various load conditions, such as peak usage periods, sudden spikes in traffic, or sustained high-volume operations. Performance testing evaluates the speed, responsiveness, scalability, and stability of a software system or application under various load and stress conditions. The main objective of performance testing is to measure the system's ability to meet specific performance criteria, such as response time, throughput, resource utilization, and concurrency, and to identify any performance issues that may impact the user experience, productivity, or profitability of the system. Control monitoring is a process of assessing control effectiveness to ensure that they are operating as intended and are aligned with the organization's objectives, policies, and regulatory requirements. The purpose of control monitoring is to ensure that a company has effective controls in place to manage its risks, protect its assets, and achieve its objectives in a sustainable and responsible manner. 
Control monitoring improves the organization's resilience by enabling faster detection of policy violations and security incidents. There are different techniques that can be used to monitor and assess the system controls. Let's review them one by one. In an information systems audit, assigned teams provide an independent and objective review of the effectiveness of the control environment. The recommendations provided by the information systems auditor can help identify the areas for control enhancement as well as bring risks to the attention of the company's management. Effective control monitoring requires that the company conducts regular vulnerability assessments and penetration tests. These tests may be conducted either internally or externally. The vulnerability assessment should provide a thorough and complete review of all system security controls, including both technical and non-technical controls. A penetration test then helps to determine the severity of the problem discovered by a vulnerability assessment. Using the results of a vulnerability assessment, the tester selects a potential vulnerability and attempts to exploit that vulnerability. If the penetration tester is able to break in, then the vulnerability is real and must be mitigated. If not, then it is likely that the vulnerability does not require mitigation. The use of a third party to provide assurance of the effectiveness of the information security program of the organization can be valuable in earning the confidence of stakeholders, customers, and shareholders. The third party is responsible for evaluating the processes of the subject organization and validating compliance with the requirements of a given standard. Examples of third-party assurances include an external information system audit, a certification of compliance with an internationally recognized standard, such as COBIT-5 or ISO 27001 or an industry standard, such as PCI DSS. By regularly monitoring and validating control procedures, organizations can maintain the effectiveness of their control systems, mitigate risks, and enhance their overall performance. Control validation and control monitoring should be an ongoing process that is integrated into an organization's overall risk management strategy. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!